Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. In this module, we will be discussing about paleo botany. Paleo botany, this word is made up of two words, one is paleo and second is botany. Paleo is a Greek word and it means old and botany, botany means a study of plants. So, paleo botany is nothing but study of paleo, uh, study of old plants. Paleo botany is a branch of paleontology. Uh, in case of paleontology, we will be studying uh, about uh, these uh, fossils. So, basically this is the study of the fossils of the plants and there is another branch that is called as paleontology that we will also be discussing in this module. So, uh, this uh, paleo botany is very very important for us to know about the history of plants. So, the learning objectives of this module, after studying this module, the students would be able to know about the plant fossils, their uh, modes of preservation and evolution of plant life through the geological past. So, let me come to the proper definition of paleo botany. Basically, paleo botany is the fusion of plants and earth sciences as I have shown in this figure. Uh, the here plants means botany and earth sciences mean geology. So, the marriage between botany and geology is called as paleo botany and it deals with the study of plant life of geological past and is mainly concerned with the fossil records that are preserved in the sedimentary rocks. These sedimentary rocks are superimposed upon one another in sequence. Usually the older sediments remain at the bottom and the younger ones toward the top. These stratified sedimentary layers vary greatly in thickness, mineral composition, fossil content and architectures. So, these may be different based upon these things. Composition of fossil flora from one particular time interval of uh, geological time scale vary from another in their assemblies, floral diversity and uh, level of complexity and that is due to evolution of plant life through history of planet earth. So, uh, basically this is the study of fossil plants. So, we must know what are the fossils. Fossils are the relics of the past and are the evidences of prehistoric life of plants. We will be studying about fossils uh, in uh, paleontology in de detail, but the fossils of plants are studied in paleo botany. And similarly, when we study the fossils of the animals, they are studied under paleontology. So, one more term has appeared here paleontology. Paleontology is nothing but the study of fossils of animals. And uh, these fossils of plants as well as that of animals are considered as direct or indirect evidence of past life. There are number of processes which are responsible for the formation of fossils and uh, these processes are shown here in this graph. These processes of fossilization include compression, impression, cast and molds, petrification, trace fossils and unaltered remain. So, these are the different processes by which fossilization take place. Now, we will try to learn little bit about these processes. Now, we will talk about each process of fossilization. First one is compression. Compression generally retain organic matter, usually more or less qualified. Means, we can say the coals which we have, they are the result of compression process of fossilization. Then impressions as the name are indicating, here we only have the imprints of plant remains. Basically, these imprints of plant remains are preserved in the sedimentary rocks. Impression fossils are devoid of any 
organic matter. In case of compression, we get organic matter, whereas in case of uh, impression, we do not have any organic matter, we just have imprints. Then uh, cast and molds, in cast and molds, basically a cast result that how a cast is formed, when sediment is deposited into cavities left by the decay of plant parts. A mold is essentially a cavity left in the sediment by the decayed plant tissue. Then uh, petrification or uh, permineralization, permineralization occurs when the plant tissues are infiltrated with minerals in cell lumens and intercellular spaces, thus preserving internal structures and anatomical details of the plant parts in three dimension. This process is also known as petrification. Then uh, trace fossils, trace fossils are any indirect evidence of past life records, behavior and ecological constraint. For example, tracks, tracks trails, burrows, coprolites, basically coprolites are nothing but fossilized fecal matter. Then uh, gastroliths, gastroliths are uh, gizzard stones, then unaltered remains and umbers. Basically unaltered remains, these are entombed in the amber are recovered from different parts of the world. They are preserved in resin and wax which is exuded from coniferous plants and fell on the forest floor often containing insect and plant parts. So, these were the different processes. I am again repeating these processes. One of them is uh, compression. In case of compression, we get organic matter, then uh, impression, then permineralization, uh, then unaltered uh, uh, fossils, etc. So, these were different processes. Then there is a another term that is uh, palynology uh, that is used in paleobotany. What is palynology? Palynology is the study of organic world microfossils preserved in the sedimentary rocks. And these microfossils includes mainly pollen grains, spores, acritracts, dinoflagellates, nanoplanktons, diatoms, chitinogens, then uh, scolicodonts, microalgae, etc. So, means uh, in general you will find in the books that the study of the pollen grains and spores is called as palynology. Okay. These all are recorded from uh, the terrestrial, marine and various uh, environments. So, here uh, we can say that paleobotany includes the study of the terrestrial plants as well as marine autotrophs. Due to their small size, they are present in large amount and number in the rocks and sediments. They are documented almost in the entire range of geological time scale that is from pre-Cambrian to the Holocene. Now, what are the applications of palynology? Palynology is one of the subdivisions as I have told earlier paleobotany and it can be applied in the several fields of geology. Let us see where palynology can be applied. So, one field is biostratigraphy. In biostratigraphy, palynology is largely used in biostratigraphic studies for demarcation, zonation and correlation of rocks at local, regional, continental and intercontinental scale. This also helps in assigning age to each interval of a stratigraphic sequence through geologic time. There is another application of uh, palynology and that is in the field of paleoecology. This palynology can be used to reconstruct paleo vegetational scenario in any part of the world and to understand paleo geographic conditions in addition to understanding past environmental and paleoclimatic conditions. For example, in one area 
we find the remains of the plants and that plant is existing today also. So, presuming that because this plant existed in past also and existing today also it means the environment in which this plant is growing here today the same environment was existing millions year ago. So, means what we can we can find out we can trace back that what based upon this uh, paleo uh, botany or based upon this plant fossil that uh, at that time what kind of climate was uh, existing. Then uh, palynology is having several applications and uh, the foremost application of palynology is in petroleum exploration. The main source material for hydrocarbon generation is organic debris you know that all that includes fossil spores and pollen, phytoplankton, marine and terrestrial algae as well as lipid rich land plant remains. Direct applications of uh, these dispersed organic matter, these also known as uh, sedimentary organic matter lies in identifying hydrocarbon source rock evaluation and potential of the sequences while estimating their type, quantity and maturity in the sedimentary rocks. These are uh, there are number of organic matter maturation scales for measuring the degree of uh, thermal alteration index. In short this uh, thermal alteration index is called as TAI values for delineating hydrocarbon source potential of uh, sedimentary sequence. Then evolution of plant life through geological time. Early plants were uh, small unicellular or filamentous composed mostly of soft body tissue with simple or no branching factor. The oldest record of life on earth are as old as 3.2 billion years. They comprise of sporomorphs of uh, Nostatian cyanobacteria. Students this cyanobacteria are uh, very interesting living form uh, on this earth. So, you try to know what are cyanobacteria basically these are not bacteria these are algae. So, you try to know what are cyanobacteria and uh, cellulose microspheres of initial plant life on earth. Early life has evolved in the pre Cambrian comprising blue green algae and this blue green algae is nothing but cyanobacteria. There were no land plants with vascular tissue until the mid Silurian time of uh, Phanerozoic eon. Remains of true vascular plants are first found in the rocks of Silurian period of the Paleozoic era. Early Devonian plants did not have roots or leaves like the plants most common today and many had no vascular tissue at all. They probably spread largely by vegetation growth and did not grow much more than a few centimeter tall. Rhine chart an uh, early land plant fossil locality of Scotland is an early Devonian deposit composed primarily of silica having preservation of mosses and lycopods along with many other fossils. Plant derived macro fossils become abundant in the late Devonian and uh, era and include tree trunks, fronds and roots. The earliest tree was having simple fern like leaves spirally arranged on branches atop a conifer like trunk. First seed forming plants appeared by the end of Devonian era. This rapid appearance of so many plant groups and growth forms has been called the Devonian explosion. The main early carboniferous plants were the horsetails. The horsetails included the common giant from calamites with a trunk diameter of 30 to 60 centimeter and a height up to 20 meters. 
the plants the plant fossils assemblies prior to late Carboniferous period is known as Recopteris flora, which is followed by Gondwana flora, comprising Glossopteris flora in the Permian, followed by Dicrodium flora in the Triassic and Tilophyllum flora during Jurassic to Crustacean. This was followed by emergence and diversification of flowering plants on the earth from middle Cretaceous in the Mesozoic. Cenozoic era has recorded the explosion of flowering plants and in the later part of the Cenozoic era almost entire plant biodiversity of modern time has prevailed. So, this all was about uh, paleo botany. So, in the paleo botany we have learned that uh, what is paleo botany and uh, how these plant fossils can help us to know about uh, different geological phenomena as well as we have learned that this uh, paleo botany is very very important in uh, petroleum exploration as well as to trace back the history of the evolution of uh, plants. Uh, I give two assignments to the students here. In first assignment, I will suggest my student to make a list of the plants, fossilized plants on which, which have been found and uh, which have been studied in detail. Secondly, this work has been done by a number of scientists. There are some great paleobotanists in the world. So, I will suggest the students to make a list of different paleo botanist those have helped in the development of this field as well as to write down that what kind of research these paleo botanist have done. Thank you.